So in today's video we're going to talk about the shoulders and there is no doubt having a good shoulder tilt is going to increase your chances of striking down on the back of the golf ball. Having a very flat shoulder tilt, which is more this way, will lend itself to more inconsistency with the contact. However, the way in which you are trying to do this and tilt your shoulders, I can pretty much guarantee is wrong. So let me talk about the correct thing that we're trying to achieve. Now, to visually demonstrate this, I'm going to use a couple of alignment sticks. I'm going to place the red alignment stick through my front two belt loops, okay? Um, and this will obviously visually just portray what my hips are doing. And then the other one, I'm going to place the green alignment stick across the tops of my shoulders like so, and, uh, and hold the club obviously just right hand only now. So, if you are the kind of golfer, which will be very high percentage of golfers, that have a tendency to stand up in the backswing position and get a flat shoulder turn, what you will try to do is you will try to just drop your shoulder down as I'm demonstrating here. But this won't work, and that's not how we're designed to move in the golf swing. What you need to understand is sequence. Okay, so the reason why you have a flat shoulder turn in the first place is because everything is moving at the same rate of rotation. And this means that you are consciously, or, or subconsciously I suppose maybe, you are allowing both your hands and arms, your chest and your pelvis to move at the early part of the backswing. And the problem is, is as you can see, this will make, see my shoulders and the hips, the way they're very sort of parallel to one another, and this will lend itself to a loss of hip depth and a flat shoulder turn. So what you want to do is you want to understand sequence. Now we know sequence exists, okay? We've been measuring sequence biomechanically for a very long, long time. And that's because what should happen is it should be hands and arms first, followed by chest, followed by lower body. Now what this does, this produces what's known as a separation, which basically means that my upper body is moving first, then my lower body, and that produces a tilt. And the best way for you guys to practice that is to do this drill. Or just practice it without a club at home. Because it amazes how many students of mine that have a, they struggle with standing up, and then they try to do things like drop the shoulders and force the hips back, and then they can't sequence a downswing because it's not an athletic move. And all of a sudden, all I ever work on is getting the feeling of moving your upper body first, and then it will feel like you've got less lower body move, you'll produce tilt, you'll get hip depth, and the downswing is just way easier. So it is so important to understand, and I get so much more success with students both online and people that come to visit for lessons, where we understand the importance of sequence, so we make sure we get ourselves set up, we understand that we allow the arms to move first, then the chest can follow, then the lower body, and this produces a tilt, and you can imagine from here I've got a really good chance of striking down and hitting through that golf ball, as I'm hopefully demonstrating there, as opposed to getting flat, and then as opposed to getting flat and then trying to force a shoulder down move and then getting stuck in that downswing. So I'm hopefully understanding the importance of sequence and it's the sequence, okay, as I'm demonstrating here. So take away and then back that gives us the ability to drop the shoulder down to the golf ball. I'll see you soon.